I have made a little more incremental progress on getting to the point of booting from a CF card on my 286 system. The small step I am taking in this video is walking through getting the boot sector loaded or a boot loader into memory and running. So I need to load that off of my CF card through my IDE interface, get it into RAM of my system, and then jump to that routine. I'll start out by showing what I have for the boot sector. Very simple boot sector. I have a label that's going to be my starting point. I jump to it. These first two lines honestly are pretty pointless at the moment. I could have later though some, some stuff in between those two lines. At the very end of the file I'm going to close it out with this special signature of AA55 that you're supposed to have there along with a uh, basically a set of uh, data right before it that's just going to point to what file name I'm going to try to load when I eventually get to that step. And before that, I pad everything with zeros. My actual code, though, that's going to run is going to call interrupt10, which is video services. And I'm going to use this function 0a, which is to write a character. And I want to write a character b. So I load 0A in the AH, I load B into the AL, and then I call the interrupt, that should print a B. And then I'm gonna print an OOT, so it's gonna say boot sect loaded. And then I'm gonna actually halt my processor at that point. So simple little program. And eventually, of course, this is gonna to have to kick off over and load up my kernel and then transfer control to the kernel. But I have some things there I haven't figured out how to do yet, and it comes down to geometry of my CF card and how do I just make sure I populate all of the necessary information about the disk info that the file system and the rest of the running of that is going to take. Now this code is going to leverage my interrupts in my BIOS. So if you've been watching my series, you know that I have my own BIOS that I'm running on this. And so here I do have my interrupt 10 handler. And when I get into that, then I'm going to go ahead and use this I have a print char that I can use, and let's see where is that right char right here. And that then calls a different routine that I have that actually then does the writing to the video memory to fill in the pixels for the characters accordingly. But that's underlying BIOS code that will get called through interrupts from this bootloader. Now, as far as my actual code goes, and maybe even before I get to that, let me jump over here. After I assemble that bootloader, this is what that's going to look like. So here is my assembled set of information that I need to get onto the very first sector of my CF card. And I'm just using this little tool, and this tool is a HXD Editor. Uh, it's, it's a nice little editor that lets me do this uh, and quickly look at this in this view. But I can see here the hex and then the if there's an ASCII uh, off to the right that makes sense, uh, human readable type of stuff. But I've loaded the boot sector. This is what it looks like. I can then turn around and actually open up a disk. And I would just go to a CF card, open it, not read only. It warns me that this could damage things if I don't know what I'm doing. That's fine. Then I go grab my boot sector and I come over here and I just paste it in. And then I would save this, which I'm not going to do for this actual CF card, but I would hit save on this. And then that's going to go ahead and write that first sector of the CF card with that bootloader information that I now want to be able to boot to. So assuming I save that, I put the CF card into my 286 system, into my IDE interface, and I turn it on. When I turn it on, it starts with my BIOS code, which starts right here. And in it, I do things like set up my interrupts. I call the VGA init and put a post screen on the, on the computer's output. Initialize the LCD, my SPI, OLED, all these things I go through and I do. But then I get down here a little bit further and I call a procedure to identify the drive. And that procedure goes out to the CF card, it checks it, and basically asks it, what does it have for things like disk geometry? And let me go ahead and open that up. I have a disk file. And in the identified drive, I'm going to end up calling and saving back information like number of cylinders, heads, 
uh, how many bytes per sector, etc. And also when I do this, I write that information out to my serial debugger. So my serial debugger is going to write out to this screen right over here. And so I'll come back to this screen and look for what is it reading for the information from the CF card as I query it. But I go ahead and I identify that. I go ahead and put into variables and memory the stuff I really want to retain. And then I keep on going and I get down to this load bootloader. And so I have a quick routine here for that. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to call a procedure called IDE read. And that lets me just simply read a number of sectors. This will actually turn into an interrupt call later when I get those uh, all the my disk services interrupts set up. So this would be interrupt 13 and I think it's function number two maybe is the read. Uh, but that function is going to expect things like what's the function number? So it's yeah, and I've got it right here in front of me. So function two, uh, I'm going to read one sector from drive zero, head zero, sector number one, sector start at one instead of being zero based. So this is really the very first sector. And I also specify the cylinder low and high information, basically CX, the CX register, the low and high together, give me 10 bits to specify cylinder information and six bits to specify sector information. But all I'm doing in this is saying, I want to go read the very first sector, the 256 or yeah, 256, 512 bytes of information, 256 words of information. I want to go read that and I want to read it from this location. So drive zero, head zero, and then sector number one. And then I call that read. And what it does is it's actually going to take that and read the information into the destination that I specify. And in this case, what I'm specifying for the destination is up here and I have to fill in ES and BX to where I want that data that's read to go to. So I'm going to make sure that my ES points to my data segment, so my very first 64K of my, my, my system, basically. And then for the BX part of that, I'm going to point to this address that I think I typically, as I'm reading, everything uh, is expected to load into the 7C00 address. So. This is setting up everything I need and actually these spaces I'm going to take out of there because this is all getting ready to do this IDE read. So I want to use 0000 and then 7C00. So that's my segment, my offset. In other words, 7C00 is where I'm going to write to. And I'm going to go read from my CF card, the first sector, and put it into that location. Uh, after I do that, I then come out here and I do have a little routine that just prints that back. And so I'm just going to say go out to 7C00, read in 256 words of data and print it out to the screen. Just so I can kind of tell, did it, do I think, do I have confidence that it wrote what I was hoping it would write into that memory. And then after that, I continue and I manually read four bytes of data from that location. And that I was doing that just because I didn't necessarily trust some of my uh, assembly work as I'm, I'm still learning some of this. And this has a lot of pointers I'm passing around. So I just wanted to validate that not only does my routine up here look like it's correct, but the four, first four bytes I pull out manually from these locations also look correct. And then I'm gonna jump to that location and so if that works, then that means that should come back over to my code that is coming, came from the CF card into RAM. And what it contains was this. And then I should now see this get printed out to the screen. That would be the hope. So what I'm going to do is just simply flip over to this. And I'm going to turn on my system. So I've already taken that assembled boot sector with that bootloader code in it, put it onto the first sector of my CF card. I had the CF card in my IDE interface for my computer. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the computer and I'll log also the VGA output so you can see that here as we go. So I have some normal initialization stuff. You can kind of see this little post stuff I put up on the screen. 
and you can see it says boot sec loaded so it made it through everything that i wanted to wanted to get through and i have a lot of just debug stuff here on the serial output but the the quick version through this is i read out the disk information from the cf card and i print it in ascii then i print it in hex and then i read out certain things from that data basically that's in memory at that point and i pull out just certain things and i store them and i print them out for debug purposes i then come down and i want to go ahead and read out what i wrote from the cf card into ram so i read from the cf card i write it to that location in memory and that location again that I am writing everything to is back over to this location of 7C00. And so I read back from that address and I dump out that entire sector's worth of data. And then I can kind of eyeball that. And if I want, I can come back then maybe load this up and bring this up in front of it and just compare, you know, so uh, 00EB, so 00EB. And then I should have a 0AB4, 0AB4, etc. All the way through the end of that, which should be my, should show up as a AA55, and that's what I've got here. And so that wrote it out to my RAM correctly. It read it back from the RAM correctly. I jumped to it. And then on my VGA output, you can see it says boot sec loaded. So that means it got to that code, it transferred control over to it, and is running from that just fine. So for me, that's a huge step forward. I know for those of you that have done this, this is a really small step, but this was uh, really good for me. It makes me happy that I can successfully read stuff off my CF card, get it loaded into RAM and start running from it. Uh, so my next step now is instead of running this little code that says boot sec loaded, I actually need to get to where I can load the free DOS kernel and then start running that. And then that's going to make a whole lot of interrupt calls, I'm sure, that I don't yet have supported on my system. I have put in logging, so if I get any unsupported interrupt calls, it'll log it for me. And then I'm just going to start chunking away through those interrupts and get them all supported so that I can fully support the free DOS kernel, or at least the, the parts of it that I have to. And then once that's done, then I can load up a, a command interpreter like a Freecom. One more step towards that to eventually be able to run free DOS on this at at some level, maybe not fully functional, but at uh, something that's that's a somewhat usable, I guess, is what I'm hoping for. Uh, if you're seeing anything here that doesn't look like I'm approaching it right, let me know. Uh, and for those of you that have done a bunch of this stuff before, maybe take a look at my my blog. I put this post up here about booting free DOS. And one of the questions I don't have quite figured out, um, I'm looking definitely for help if anybody can give me any guidance, is once I get to the point that I've gotten to, I'm actually gonna load the bootloader that is coming from FreeDOS. And if I go out, I could look at that right here. And if I look at one of these bootloaders, I think it's expecting and needing for all my FAT and all the file system stuff to work a bunch of information about my disk. And my question is, how do I populate this? Where uh, is this all stuff that I should be getting from that geometry information that I got from the CF card? And do I just manually, after I load this boot sector, then do I just go to these addresses? These are all relative to that 7C00. Do I just manually go to 7C00, offset 3, and put in my OEM label and go to 0B and copy over the bytes per sector and, and other information that I have? And then I've got some questions like, what are hidden sectors? I don't know what those are at this point yet either. Um, so I put some questions here. So if any of you uh, have a lot of experience with this, uh, definitely take a look at that. And if you could uh, shoot me any pointers or tips, I would appreciate it. But I'm going to keep working on that, and uh, I will post more information if I can get to this next step, which is trying to get an actual free DOS kernel loaded. Mm -hmm.